Hey, what's up? Jason here. About a week ago, I was scrolling through my YouTube feed and I noticed this Unity challenge going on. A Lego Ninjago game jam sponsored by Unity and Lego. It seemed like something too great to miss out on. I've been talking about how I wanted to do a game jam for quite a while and I keep missing the opportunities, so this time I just jumped right in. The rules were pretty simple, just use Unity, their game kit, and some of the Lego Ninjago characters, but I wanted to add a couple extra limitations to myself, like only working on it for a maximum of 24 hours and making sure that I stream Monday through Friday whatever development that I do and kind of let the community get involved. And finally, I wanted to make sure that I finished the game, got it submitted, and that it was fun. I wanted to have kids run through, play it, and actually enjoy playing the game, want to play again. If they didn't play it again, I'd consider it a failure. But first, this video is sponsored by Backtrace. Backtrace is a debugging platform that fully automates error capture and helps you improve your debugging workflow. All developers know how frustrating debugging can be, which is why having a debugging tool like Backtrace is great to help move projects along and cut down on development time. Their plugin supports all game engines, languages, and deployment platforms, and lets you catch errors in all instances of your game. I've been using Backtrace myself, and their easy-to-use web console is great. It generates structured, searchable error reports from your data, which makes it extremely easy to monitor, analyze, and debug errors across all platforms. The best thing about Backtrace is that their developer plan is completely free and lets you manage up to 25,000 monthly errors and gives you 10 gigs of storage. It's very easy to get started, and if you think this sounds interesting, I made a video on how to set it up and implement it into your workflow, which I highly recommend you go check out. So go sign up now for free and check out the video by simply clicking the links in the description. My process for game jams always starts out about the same. First step, take a shower or something to clear my head. I've got to come up with some ideas and shower or somewhere where I'm totally isolated is a great way to give me just the room and time to think quietly and come up with all kinds of different weird ideas and just bounce them around in my head without any distraction or any other thoughts coming in. There's no screens, no anything popping up making sound or anything else around me. Just my head, my thoughts, and whatever ideas I can come up with. I had a few ideas come to mind, a racing game, a jumping game, and a little building idea, but then I decided to go on to step three, which is reach out to people. Start spreading my ideas and asking for others. Do a little bit of brainstorming with friends and everybody on my email list. Then I took all the best ideas and put them into my Millinote board. From there, I had about 20 ideas, and some of them seemed really great, but a little too big and a little too out of scope. And then I realized that there was one other rule that I had missed, and that was the rule that you can only have one button. So I couldn't have a touch screen, I can't touch anywhere on the screen, just a single button and that's it. I can do a hold down or tap, and of course that meant I had to cut a lot of ideas out. So I decided to get started with one of the easier ideas, a simple racing game where I would set up multiple ninjas, have them run side by side and race each other. I decided on Monday I would start by just live streaming right from the beginning, starting with the process of importing in the Lego assets with the Lego minifigure package and the Ninjago kit, and then figuring out how to move around with that, how the demo scenes worked a little bit, and once I felt comfortable with how the systems worked, I decided it was time to start with my game. And the first step of my game was to have some ninjas that just ran. Now usually moving a character in Unity doesn't take too much work. I've done a bunch of tutorials about it, you can check them out. But in this mini kit pack, it's even easier. I didn't have to write a single bit of code, I just took a single minifig character out and then adjusted the settings. There's an option to just run when I'm holding the button down or to run continuously and then jump when I'm holding the button down. I did find that I needed to switch away from the minifig controller to the one button minifig controller. It made it a whole lot easier because the whole thing was just set up for a single button and it stopped my character from being controllable with WASD. So if you want to follow along in this game jam and you're actually going to build out a ninja game, definitely check out that one button minifig controller. It'll save you a lot of time and make things quite a bit easier. So once I had the basic controls for my character and my character was running, I decided to set up some obstacles thinking, okay, if we miss the obstacles, it slows us down and then maybe somehow we lose the race. The obstacles were a little bit difficult, not quite working right, so I decided to set up some prizes instead, some things that I could jump up, grab, and collect, and then I thought maybe these could just be speed boosts. 
I got a second character in there so I could actually race against somebody and then set up some really hacky system for controlling how fast my characters went. By the end of it, the system was not great, the game was not very fun, and I was a little bit unsure what I wanted to do. But I came back on Tuesday and continued. The first thing I did was clean up my dirty, ugly hacks of code, something I definitely recommend everybody do. If you've got bad, ugly, hacky code, fix it when you can. That was my first step. After that, I decided to try to improve the gameplay to see what I could do to make it more interesting and more fun. I started building out a little bit of the level, adding in some different power-up stuff, but nothing was really coming together. By the end of the day, to be honest, I was kind of demoralized and thinking, I don't know if this is going anywhere. I don't know what I'm going to do with this. We'll see how it goes on Wednesday. Wednesday was different. I decided to start the day again with another shower to think and a bit of a weird massage. After this, I came to the realization that the game I was building just wasn't fun and I needed to make a quick shift and now was the time to shift before it was too late. So I decided to go with another one of my ideas, something that had been bouncing it around in my head before I went with the racing game that I thought might be fun but might end up not being nearly as interesting. I was wrong. The new game was a jumping game, a simple one where you just have to time jumps and you go back and forth between the two edges of the tower. I was thinking of it kind of themed off of the TV show. The bad guy lives at the top of a tower, or he's at the top of a tower in pretty much every Lego movie, I guess. And then the good guys are always trying to get up there and then battle him. So I made a game where you jump up to the top of the tower by timing your jumps and doing some double jumps and essentially dodging things. The first step was just to get a character running back and forth, and that was pretty easy. I just set up a character with the minifig controller, had him run forward, and then added in a little collider that made him turn around when he hit it. Didn't take more than two lines of code, and my game was already kind of in action. Jumping already worked, so I dropped out some platforms and made a quick little tower that I could jump up. And then it came down to just adding in all of the different little bits of functionality to make it interesting and fun. I started by adding in different types of platforms, trying out different types of rewards and things that we could pick up along the way. Thursday, we started adding in some more challenges like enemies and moving platforms and really building up the level so that you could get higher and higher and kind of setting up different sections. I think there's also when I added in the checkpoint so that you could get to a level and then have it save you there so that you couldn't fall down further. The game is going to be for kids and I figured it shouldn't be too difficult. We should give them some way to save their progress along the way automatically. On Friday, I decided it's time for some more ninjas. We just didn't have enough ninjas. We had a single one. And if I know anything about kids, it's that they all have their favorite color or their favorite ninja or their favorite whatever it is. And I wanted to allow them to pick whichever one they wanted. I started by creating a menu scene, a simple one where you could pick the character by clicking on them. Now think this through. What's the problem there? I missed it at first, but luckily one of my viewers in chat totally called it out. The fact that we have to build a one button game, so I couldn't allow them to click. So at the end of the stream, I was left with a semi-functional game with a ninja selection system that allowed you to pick from three of the ninjas, but by breaking the rules. I also had some really serious performance issues. The game wasn't really running well, and when I'd do a WebGL build, it would take forever to build, forever to load, and then run just really bad. People would chop through walls, and the game just wasn't playing right. So I decided it was time to spend a little bit of extra time on the weekend figuring out how to fix this thing up. 10 hours wasn't going to be quite enough maybe 20 would get it done. So I spent the next Saturday first debugging the performance issues. I started trying to optimize and figuring out where the issues were, trying to track down the problems, and then realized maybe I should look at the demo scenes one more time. A quick look at the demo scenes made me realize that there's a game manager and a game manager HUD that I needed to pull in because they had some components on there that perf did performance optimizations to fix all of the issues I was having. Once I pulled those two things in, I realized that I wasn't taking full advantage of the HUD and I didn't really have a good collectible system or a way to time out my game loss. So I added those in as well and started having a little bit more fun with my game. I was able to get a score, start collecting things and have, a, I guess, a different outcome than just win and lose. 
that didn't seem like a good option, especially if this game happened to win and get put into some installation. I figured it needed to have a timer. It needs to be able to kick kids off after maybe a minute or a minute and a half, tell them to, hey, go back to shopping or let the next kid in line have a turn, which I found to actually be really helpful when I got around to playtesting with toddlers. When I had one device, they both wanted to play, they both wanted to take turns, and the timer kicking them out was actually perfect. 90 seconds was just about the right amount of time, I think, but I think that'll probably also vary based on the type of game you build and how complex or how long it takes to get to the end. But 90 seconds feels good to me. By the end of Saturday, I had performance pretty much down and most of the bugs worked out. Things were generally going okay and I'd built up a basic character selection system that allowed me to pick from any of the six ninjas with a single button just by scrolling through them and having them press the button when they want to get to them. Now, it's not the most ideal system. Most kids are going to pick the first ninja, which is why I also made the first ninja the easiest one to play. When I added in multiple ninjas, I decided why not add a little bit of variation there. So I just adjusted the camera views, the angles a little bit, and gave two of them some extra jumps so that they could be extra powerful. Because, hey, why not? It's a fun little ninja game. May as well have some extra variation in there. After that, I decided to just do a bunch of play testing, have toddlers play and play and play, have everybody else play as much as possible, see where people got stuck, see where I didn't like things or where things felt just a little bit too difficult and just kept tuning. Once it was done, I finally just pushed it out and well, now it's done. Actually, that's a lie. There was one step in between. In between, I decided, hey, I'm going to implement FMOD here to remove the little stutter of audio in between loads so that when you go from one scene to the other, the sound keeps playing. Plus, I just really wanted to play with FMOD. What I didn't realize was when I did that, I broke everything and the audio stopped working in WebGL about half the time. So I reverted that, went back in. Luckily, I've got source control and converting wasn't too hard to go back and forth between the two. Just make sure you re-enable Unity Audio. But once that was done, I republished my game, put it up there, and now it's available for you to play. Next step for me is just to submit it into the Game Jam to see if it wins. I expect there will be lots of really cool entries. And if you see one, by the way, please drop it down in the comments. Or if you make your own entry and submit it into the Jam, share it down below. I'd love to check it out. And I'm sure everybody else watching would love to try it out as well. Also, if you want to play the game that I've built here that you can see... Go try it out at the link below and remember that the different ninjas are a little bit different. It's worth trying out at least two or three of them. Have fun with it and let me know what you think. Also, try out the mini game kit. It's pretty freaking awesome. It's really easy to build stuff, really simple to just put a game together without writing any code, and pretty interesting to try out. Also, don't forget to check out Backtrace. Get started automating your debugging workflow and get rid of all your game crashes for free by simply clicking the link in the description.